The corporations have not yet won. Community still exists in small tucked away areas not often talked about. Artists and businesses beginning to thrive in places thought to be defeated. Dave, I like to call him David Francis. And I, Tom Maslowski, are here to give you a glimpse of what's going down in downtown J-Town. We're going to be interviewing all of our favorite musicians, artists, and business owners that give every ounce of themselves into what they do. And we are back at Third City Sound for episode 38. We have got Sue Regis and Kayla Zagrossi in the house tonight. And of course, Mr. Dave Francis. Hi. On the board of sound. The board of sound, yes. Which is not like the board of directors. It's more like he's really bored. Is it yes. like the wall of sound from the Grateful Dead? I don't know what you mean by that. Come on. It's more Elaborate. of the, the Phil Spector wall of sound. Without the, the, how the Grateful Dead brought in like a huge wall of sound so all their fans would be happy. Like, seriously? Like Google this when you get, Yeah, and then their road crew had to work. Like they never got any sleep because they'd stack up all these it's old like time a, speakers. The, the pyramid thing, yes, thing right? Yes, and, the, and their road crew would do this. So like nobody <laughs> ever slept because they'd go from show to show and it took them so long to put it up and, and so long to take it down. <laughs> and it was called the wall of sound. That's not a fun gig. I no. would be upset about that gig. Like, probably doesn't pay do? well either. Hmm. What's that? Probably didn't pay well either. What do you mean by that? Oh, because they were all hippies and they just kind of drove around? The roadies. Nobody cares about roadies. Wow. Wow. Did you just say that I, I'm in public uh, domain? I, speaking from a roadie perspective. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, you're going to catch a lot of flack for that. Just let you know. <laughs> no. So we wanted to bring the two of you ladies back on the show. And this is your first time, Kayla. But there's been a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot going down in downtown J-Town. Not to plug my own show on... <laughs> The show. You're you allowed to do that. It. Yeah, you should plug your own show. <laughs> it's like the whole point. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to point any fingers though. <laughs> but no, seriously. So there's been a lot of things going on. Um, the art movement started off as kind of just like beer and pizza and hanging out, and it turned into this thing. Now you guys are incorporated. Um, and I know, Kayla, you've been helping out with that quite a bit, keeping things organized. And then also things kind of spilled over into what, what is the proper name? I just keep calling it the Prison Project. What the is prison like, project. Is it really just called the prison project? <laughs> so where do you guys want to start? Let's start off with the art movement. Because I know, Sue, you and I have been talking for years about just trying to organize any kind of event. And then you came up with this, with the art movement. I did. Yeah. It went um, pretty well. It did. It was like uh, after the last, not the last, but the Glass Vagina show I did in October of 2017. And there was a lot of changes in in my life and my personal life, and I kind of just wanted to, to, to put my energy somewhere and, and, and build a community. And I had people like you and Aaron Blazer and Eric and different people like asking me, like, let's do something, let's do something. And um, I decided, fuck it, let's do it. And I, I thought it was great, too. Our, our first project was doing a bunch of collages, and um, a bunch of us got together and decided to just, hey, making collage is pretty easy no matter what. You come from as far as what kind of art you're good at. Everyone can cut out some pictures and glue them onto a board. And it was a great networking project. I mean, I think a lot of people met each other and got to know each other and see each other's like work habits and work ethics and things like that. Um, and now they're all hanging up in your shop. We have almost that whole wall covered, right? We do, yeah. I think we still got a, a couple more to make. I think there's a couple that aren't even hung yet. Yeah. We need to figure out a way to frame them so they stay up a little bit better. But I think that's like the staple of art movement. It's always going to be collages. I feel like that's what you know, brought us all together. Right. Yeah. The collaboration of all these people mm -hmm. doing different things to make one giant movement or Maybe scene. Maybe Kayla can tell you about her, her, her collage she did. Oh, my collage? What did you do? Let well, me pull up a picture. You... <laughs> her collage it's is very... awesome. It, it's totally her, and it, 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 it's, a, it's a nice yes. spin. It's, it speaks, you know, So me. what did you do? What did you... I just did, you know, like more of a farmhousey, rustic... <laughs> You know, Magnolia Farms, Chip and Joanna Gaines with like a burlap bow on it, a very obnoxious burlap bow on the top. <laughs> it sticks out. There's a picture. As down. soon as you walk in the door, it's one oh, of the that's first cool. Ones. Yeah, I saw that one. We'll, nice. we'll post some pictures on the uh, yeah on the episode photo album. That's awesome. It's a little different, but 
And so now what is your role in the art movement? Every time I see you there at a she, meeting, you're like typing away and like keeping track of everything that's said, basically. That's exactly her role. Is that really? That's basically all of us artists in line. That's Keep all the, uh, yeah, right. The admin, the organization of it all. Sure. And now how did you guys, now I, I know you've, I've seen you all over the place and at Chicago Street and stuff for years, but yeah. how did you guys know each other? Is that? Same, downtown Joliet. Just running into yeah, each other. running into pub. each other and we ended up having a couple conversations here and there about what her day job is and, and um, it just kind of went from there. Sure. And of course me being me, I'm like, well, how about this? And what do you think about this? And, you know, I have somebody that, that does work for me in Minnesota that does all my like QuickBooks and taxes and all this stuff. And she's in Minnesota <laughs> and I'm here and I'm as much as I'm like together, I'm still an artist, man. I'm all over the place sure. and I need somebody here to remind me to do a lot of shit. Yeah. Responsibility uh, time. Well, right. like just about like filing and, and being more organized and especially wanting to set up, a, you know, a non for profit. There was a lot of things in Regis Glass art, not that anything was that out of control, but just, you know, like I'm an artist. So I might, you know, for instance, I had like a stack of waivers from the last five years, just like all mixed in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Waivers They're, for what? What do you well, mean? Well, for, for my make your own pendants and stuff like oh. that. <laughs> that they were all just like mixed in all over the place. And, you know, they just start like filing and being more organized. And it kind of started from there. Um, so now are you guys newly acquainted then, more or less? Nah, I mean, like I said, we know each other from downtown. Bouncing around. Yeah, I mean... Seeing each other at the bar, hey, how's it going? Talking at the farmer's market, you know, whatever. Then, so what led to you needing to be incorporated from going from something? I mean, is it, was it because of the upcoming art fair that you had to kind of make that change? Or what? what is it just kind of looking into the future, knowing that things are going to get hectic and busy and you might as well be prepared? Well, I mean, the vision with art movement or your vision with well, art I movement. Well, I think, aren't you asking why we had to become, art movement had to become incorporated? Yeah. So that's all part of the process to become a 501c3 nonprofit is one of the first steps you take as any organization is um, filing for articles of incorporation, and that's where you become incorporated. So you can become, you know, we chose Inc., so we changed it from Art Movement, everything was just Art Movement before, to The Art Movement Inc., which is unique to just this organization and the background of it. And then from there, then we can go into filing the actual 501c3 status with the IRS and being able to be granted the actual nonprofit status. But where we are right now is we're incorporated. And so now it's at the point now where the board needs to be put together and the bylaws need to be drafted and the programs need to be rolled out and thought of what we're going to do in the future with the grant or with the nonprofit and how we can, you know, get what her vision is out there. Right, it's, so it's easier to advertise and have events and have yeah, artists come well, in and yeah, sell things. Yeah, and, absolutely. But it's um, it's a long process from this point forward. The articles of incorporation is like the easiest thing. It it came back in twenty four hours, and so it basically for, tells you you're a legit organization with a um, legit purpose, and you have you know three necessary board of, you know board of directors. Sure. Um, in which we had three people, including her. And so that look of professionalism, what other, what else does it allow you to do? Like what other things? Okay. So like, I'm just Joe Schmo. I want to have an event at someone's place. How is that now different being a corporation or being incorporated? Well, I don't think the being incorporated part actually meet well, and, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it means an entire lot. I think it just is that first step in becoming the not-for-profit. You can become incorporated with any business or organization you have, as long as you have, you know, you have the right documentation and you're a legit organization, you can become incorporated or file for articles of incorporation through the state or it's whatever a, state. It's but a liability thing. It, yeah. There I you see. go. That way, if somebody sues the company, your assets are protected. Yeah. You're it's different. It's assets. different than a sole proprietorship. I do know that. Do yeah. know that, that they, if you're a sole proprietorship, I think they can go after your personal stuff. Yes. Do you see how this whole time I didn't have much to say about any of this because I don't <laughs> well, understand. Well, I'm like learning too. Like, oh, yeah, what are we doing? You know, and that's exactly where her role, um, you know, came in with all of this. So, and it just the actual business part, the business part of it, and like this whole prison project, and you know, all this stuff. So she, um, she's like the glue that holds all of us artists together. No. And now <laughs> she is though. She doesn't think so, no, but she is. 
It definitely got more serious when you jumped on board. And speaking of which, there is an official date for an art movement art show. July 21st. July 21st, yeah. right? Art, yeah, it's Art Movement Presents In The Making, a collaboration of art and music. Nice. Yeah, nice. there's going to be how many bands or how many artists, uh, think, music artists? I think we're ready to go. I can give you all five right now. Do it. Are you ready? Yeah. Although I don't know if I know how to pronounce. I, all right, we'll just figure that out. I can. Big line, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that and your band. So, so we have, and this is the, the three solo artists. This is in no order. I, I we haven't talked to them about which one's playing first, second, or third. But I have John Condren, Alex Hoffer, and Brian from River Horse, sure. and then Brian the Motel. big, and then the big L. The big line, yeah. And then <laughs> col- Colonel Chloroform. Colonel Chloroform. Cl- yes. Colonel Chloroform. You guys are gonna they headlight. Knock you out. Yes. So, that, you know, that's the, that's the plan. Um, I have to talk to Lauren last tomorrow more about sure. it. But, I, you know, I think we already basically discussed all this and we're ready to rock and roll. I, I'm ridiculously excited about and, that. And the best thing about, <clears throat> not the best thing, I think it's one of the uh, awesome that goes to show what, you know, how great the City Center Partnership is and how they want to help is they're letting these artists set up for free for this show. Yeah. It's the first show and they're letting artists come in as long as you're hand making stuff and you can set up your booth for no cost. Wow. You know, there is a small, like, I think there's an option that you can donate up to $20 if, oh. if you want to. Right. And, and so big shout out to Lauren Lass and the city center partnership, because that's great. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. Like, They've been great. They, taking yeah. us seriously in every thing we've ever asked. Right. You know, it's been, a real treat. So I think we're going to have a, you know, a good amount of artists out here. Um, and it, it should be a blast. Now, how many artists do you has, have as of right now? Is there like for, five? For the show or yeah. in art movement? Yeah, for the show. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're... <laughs> Just grabbing them as they come in. Yeah, I in, mean, kinda. it's, you know, we're doing um, an art show with... Um, Injunction, if that's the right way to say it. Sure. Uh, with the... New Orleans North with yeah. the Juliet Chamber. So that one's coming first on June 8th. Um, so we're kind of focusing on that one right now and trying to get these artists. So if you guys are listening, get me your sheets back. I really need them this week for <laughs> John Simpson. Sheets. We do. We do. So John Simpson and the, and the New Orleans people can advertise for you guys. So this promote is crucial. Yeah, we, we promote who's going to be there. So this is crucial, guys. Um, <laughs> you know none of them are going to listen to it, right? No, like they're they're <laughs> <laughs> they'll, just, they'll, they'll listen to like, ignore that part. So we're kind of dealing with that one um, first, and uh, then we'll go on to the other one. But I think once – I know there'll be a good amount of people that I know from Art Movement, and and then I think it'll be advertised out to the public too. Yeah. You know, the only thing it's going to be is we're not going to hit hard. Like anybody that does art shows knows that there's like a jury process, meaning – at bigger high-end art shows, they jury in so many people that do paintings. They jury in so many people that do oh. ceramics so that it's not like, you know, 50 artists and 35 of them are painters because they're right. all in competition. And because this show is free, as long as you're hand-making something, you can be in the show. Sure. So we're not – I mean, we might ask to see pictures of something – to right. make sure that it's handmade, but we're not going to be like, oh, sorry, we don't need any painters or we don't need another ceramic person or whatever. So that is, you know, one thing that – you know, it's going to happen, but because it's free, it, you know, whatever, man, it's free. <laughs> kind of loose, right? Yeah, kind it's of free. Thing. Like, come out and, like, be a part of the first year of this, because this is just going to grow. And it's free for the public also, yes. too, right? The, the 21st, yes. July 21st. Yes. That's yeah. going to be awesome. Kid-friendly. There's going to be yeah, kid activities we're going to have a kid there. activity and awesome. I don't, I don't mean I wish somebody else was here. I think we talked about doing, talking to other people in art movement, because they could probably explain it better. Well, Erin Blazer's yeah, going to be yeah. handling some of that stuff, she too. Is. So Sue DeLost, right? Maybe we can get, you can get them on here, and they can kind of talk about more of the kid activities, because I kind of just said, like, I'm super busy. I support whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, well, <laughs> Like, what kind of painting or, you know, whatever's going to happen with the kids, you guys can take care of it. And they had great ideas that I... I mean, I kind of have an idea what they were talking about, but I don't want to explain it wrong, so I should probably just zip it. Sure. Well, but I, I from plan on one having three. all of you guys back on. I mean, I want to have <laughs> Tony Uzardo on. I want to have Sue DeLost on, Eric and Aaron Orn. You know, I want to have a little bit of each project. I'd like to get um, Quinn Adamowski on here also to talk mm-hmm. you know, more in depth about all that uh, the prison project and all that kind can of stuff. Can you guys, so. I mean, maybe we can get into the prison and do a podcast. I, I would love to. And folks, if you're listening to this and you want to see a video cast of the old Joliet prison, the old Statesville, man, all the support we can get to make that happen would be great. Um, we do have a, a film crew, as you know. We did a, a video cast for Tin Roof 
and for the Chicago Pinball Arcade, the Chicago Street Pinball Arcade. Um, and we would love to get them back out to get into the prison. I think that would be scary. Just, well, scary. I don't think it'll be daylight, <laughs> it's man. It's fun. No ghosts, so don't worry. Dave's already freaking out. <laughs> I'm I don't know here. about that. I'm up here late at night, so I don't know if it gets any worse than that. <laughs> yeah. This oh, building is man. definitely haunted, man. <laughs> don't tell There's, me that. Oh, man. Sorry. Yeah. Um, real quick, before we yourself. start talking about the prison, back to the July 21st show, there's going to be a kids-like activity from 1 to 3 right when it starts. Oh, okay. And, and it's super cool. So and we're be, supposed to have some restaurants open, too, right? Yeah. Like, Chevrolet should be open. Yeah, Hopefully, I'm, we can get hope... Blue Taco to open. It would yeah, be pretty yeah. great. You know, like, and I'm sure Triz will be open, and, you know, yeah. I, I think it'll be great. I think we talked about maybe some food trucks coming in, and so, yeah, a good beer, obviously elder, and hopefully migraine, and, you know, let's do this. Like, yeah. so let's do something different down here. So any artists that are listening, like, hit up, I, I guess, me. You're right. <laughs> uh, Regis Glass. Yeah. I'm going to post links to all these pages. I'm not hard to find, um, and we can get you the information if you want to come out and be a vendor. So now how did you fall into... The prison project. Did you guys have to like get out there and be active to be a part of that? Uh, no, I was. It was like a, a cold day in February. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, drinking at a bar. No. no, it wasn't. I was actually getting ready for a show, or not a show. I was getting ready for a group to come in, and my phone rang, and it was a random number. And there's this person on the other end of the line that said, "Hey, I see you're in your studio. Can I come in?" And I was like, "Sure. What are you looking for?" And he's like, well, I just want to talk to you about some stuff. And I was like, well, all right, well, you know, I I think maybe it was close to Valentine's Day. So I was kind of reminding the person on the other end of the line, like, I'm super busy. I don't have much inventory to, like, sell outright. But if you want to come in and take a look, that's cool. And he said, I'm not looking to buy anything. I'm, I'm looking to give you an opportunity. And that was Quinn. Wow. And I have a hell of a time saying Quinn's last name. Adamowski. Yes, that was Quinn. So Quinn came in with this chunk of, um, he thought it was glass. <clears throat> But it wasn't. It was like a thick, hard piece of plastic, and oh, really? it came out of the chapel in the in the old prison that was on the ground. And he thought about me and knew that I had a glass studio. And I know his sister, and she's a customer of mine, and she's great. So I think that's probably where the connection was made with Quinn. Sure. Um, and he thought it was glass, and he was like, I'm just wondering if you can do anything with this. And I said, well, it's not glass. It's plastic, and I probably can't do anything with it, but I know somebody that can do something with it. And Will, it Was it Will? No, it was my friend uh, Jeff, who I've been doing artwork with, artwork with for probably twenty years, and he's an iron worker during the day, and he's kind of one of those guys that, you know, gets up early at two o'clock in the morning to create artwork to stay oh, sane. Wow. You know what I mean? Like he just loves to do artwork. Um, and him and I have, you know, he's helped me tremendously through the business, and he does stained glass and fused glass. He does some torch work, and he's like my right hand man in in so many projects, and has been for so many years, and. Um, so I said, no, I, I can't do anything with it on the torch. It's plastic, and but I know somebody that can. And Quinn wanted a gavel made to, oh, wow. to like show up to meetings and stuff with this gavel. And I said, well, Jeff, I don't know if Jeff can do wood, but he can probably do metal. So to make a long story short, and I'll send you a picture, and you can put it on the page or whatever. Sure. Jeff made a metal gavel, like the replica of a key from the prison, like from the cells, like the guards would use to get into the cells. Sure. And then inset this inset this this blue plastic in the top of it and it just kind of went from there huh. and then it turned into like well what other artists do you know <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, and, and well. then it just yes and then it just literally went from there and we all had a meeting in march probably seven artists myself and probably seven other artists that i handpicked that i thought could be beneficial to this project and we all sat down with quinn and drank some beers and talked and and learned about the project and what they were looking for. And then I think a week later, um, we got into the prison. Like there was an 11 o'clock group and a 3 p.m. group. Um, and I'm telling, he warned us, he said, you get ready, get ready. Because once you get in there, like your mind's going to be blown. And, and, and that's exactly what happened. Like we walked into this place. So much history and it's stories. Just like, yes, just, you're just like, you don't even, it's just, yeah, it's crazy. So now what is, what is the goal so I know right now everyone is you kind of just you're cleaning it up right now. You're just picking up like all the oh you got to talk, Kayla. What is it? I'm looking at you, buddy. What um? So no. what are what are you doing? Is it just a cleanup right now? Are you hunting for artifacts, kind of thing, or what what is it? Um. Well, to note, there's 
if you remember, what was it, like Memorial Day last yeah. year? There was three burned or buildings that were burned. Right. And those buildings are just in a completely deteriorated state. And basically everything that was in those buildings is just the, oh, the museum or the city can't do anything with it. Oh. Um, so the whole purpose between uh, with Sue and the group of artists is to go into these burn buildings and pull out material that they can use and repurpose into art and either make individual pieces, wearable pieces, pieces that can be auctioned off, sold in the museum, um, like collaborate on big, history, large pieces. Basically. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and they're finding like everything. You can talk about some of the stuff you found. But those three burn buildings are the main focus of the group. But right now with the prison, just overall, it's just, it is cleaning it up. So there's been a couple cleanup days with laborers. And then um, there's a city community cleanup this weekend. And that's May. 19th? 19th and 20th. Right, yeah. Saturday and Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's all kinds of, what, there's three times on each day? Or is it two different times? Two different times. And I think they have that promoted online Yeah, that everyone needs to register. There's two different times on Saturday. It's like a 10 to something and then like a two to, seven, two to four, or yeah. one to four. Um, and there's light duty sweeping and stuff and then some heavy stuff. They majority of, you know, the... The rooms inside the prison and the yard itself, the you know the um, the fencing's all gone. The brush is kind of cleaned up, and everything's kind of been taken out just to you know get it clear and ready and revamped, if you will, for them to have tours. Oh, they are. So they're they're planning on making it like a a, a monument, so to speak. Yeah, like I think they termed site. it as like Alcatraz of the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. And it's on Route sixty six. Yeah, Tom, every famous. time we're out there, just I mean, last time I think last Saturday or maybe it was a Saturday before. I'm out there all the, like on the weekends, like sure. this, and I have dreams about this fucking prison. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> like it, like I have nightmares too. Yeah, yeah I don't have any couple. nightmares, but like I literally like I don't know. It just stays with you. But anyway. I mean, there's people that are, like, I've met two different sets of people that were from Europe that were just traveling down Route 66 that just stop on the outside to take pictures. But there's wow. people out there all the time sure. just to take pictures right. from the outside of it. And then they're like, what are you guys doing in the inside? And <laughs> we're we like, just, <laughs> yeah. And we're like, no, you can't. But just wait, you know, like, just wait. That, because that is pretty amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an awesome project. It's good stuff. I mean, it's taken up, you know, Everybody that are not just the visual arts committee, but all the other committees. I mean, we're all working really hard. Now, know? is there a date in mind? Probably not for when it's going to actually be. A t what, is, what is the date from that? I think, <clears throat> I think the deadline was like June eighth or ninth. Oh wow! Well, I, mean, that, well, but I don't know if we're supposed to say. It. It's like a soft, soft thing. It's not an open. It's not a true open of of the prison. I think they're well. just gonna. Yeah, I don't know. They want to open this summer? I mean, I could just blame it on Kayla if we weren't supposed to say that. I'm like, she said it, not me. <laughs> I no, think that's what they, no, they, they have de No, I'm they have sure. definitely <laughs> talked about the possibility of June 8th. Um, but you it can, would you can be just go like. Ahead and open that beer. It would be a <laughs> soft <laughs> opening for tours. And I think they're, the plan was is they're going to like bus people in from the museum. Oh, wow. And, and kind of, and then have people give feedback about what needs to change. Do you oh. know what I mean? Or, or they're not just change, but if what was great, what needs to change and kind of do that for a while. And and they'll have certain places ready. You know, because there's, there's going to be places out there that people can't see because it still needs work. Sure, it's like not safe. Yes. And so, and then that's the rumor I hear is hopefully for June 8th, but then definitely the end of August, the last weekend in August, there's a, a grand opening. Wow, I had no idea it was all going that fast. Oh, it's going, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, like, man, that's going to take forever to clean that place up. It's a huge place. I mean, <clears throat> which is why you guys are working double shifts there, like, all the time. <laughs> so now yeah. let's go over, just real quick, all the different events that are coming up now for basically art shows. So there's, you guys will be at the, the June 8th. New Orleans North, which is an amazing time, by mm -hmm. the way. It's a great show. Oh, man. And everyone was kind of like turning their face up a little bit like, why are they putting people in the alley? That was one of the coolest parts for me. We're not going to be in the alley, though. We're going to be in the oh. plaza outside my studio. Like, and like in, the, where the red it. brick area is behind the fountain. 
Yeah. But I mean, it was cool an idea about But there's the a lot of trees and stuff. I mean, it's going like, to look really cool. The alley was New cool. Orleans style. I mean, I get it too, but, uh, you know, whatever they were. Well, isn't there a band still going to be in? They, and there was last year, I think, too. Yeah, last oh, year. that was magic. It was it crazy was. because I went to, it was by the Abita beer tent. Mm-hmm. And I went to get a beer. I had no idea there was a band back there until I got up close enough, obviously. And you kind of look back there. And it was set up. It was. It looked great. There was tables back there. It was cleaned up. They had banners like, uh, like you know, kind of curtains hanging between the buildings and big giant lights and an awesome blues band back there playing. Right. It sounded great. And it was cool because you could not hear the big land yet playing. You know, it was all sectioned off well enough to where you can go and enjoy the music separately. Mm-hmm. And it was a great time. There was no fights. There was no drama. There was no one yelling and screaming that you knew about. Well, <laughs> no, there was nothing. It was. It was cool. <laughs> And um, so I guess I was just kind of hoping to be in the alley. I like to hang out in the alley. <laughs> Crack that beer. Don't make no oh, faces. Oh, you're going to put it right up against my... Oh, okay. <laughs> we support beer in this town, I'm like it. trying to be all quiet. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla was like sneaking Not the beer. Not disruptive. Like, and- <laughs> We're getting in trouble for drinking beer. <laughs> uh, so New Orleans North, great time. Then there's going to be the July 21st official art movement mm-hmm. art show. Uh, then what's after that? Then all the farmers markets. Are there anything going on for the farmers markets with you guys? Yeah, we'll be set up. James will be out there. Sure. Yeah. Now will there be an art movement table, or we're just should, be there should, no? There should be an art movement um, table too. That hopefully people will alternate, and um, somebody, one person from art movement, can work it kind of each week and have sure. random stuff out. So, thanks for the heads up reminder. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a really cool idea. I work second shift, so I, I miss everything. Uh, including farmers markets all the time. So Joliet, uh, the CCP, puts on a nighttime farmers market on a Wednesday. It starts at four and goes till eight, but then Chicago Street Pub is open, so it just keeps on rolling. There's tons of local food, beer, music, artists. There's vendors, stuff to buy, and a lot of the businesses stay open. It's completely free. It's family friendly. It's always a great time. Um, and now, what's going on in August? You said is that mostly going to just be there is, we are doing a, an art show for Tony. Oh, yeah, Tony Uzardo. On uh, June 16th, which is kind of, it's not kind of, it is going to be with that that big show, the Saturday show at the Forge. Oh, yeah, because, the outside? Yes. The very first? Yeah, it's with when Local H and Everclear and... Is that Rock the Block or something? Yes. Yeah, it's in the new, well, it won't be a green area at the, at this time, but at least no. they'll have that whole right. thing set up gravel with the stage. And the, so yeah, we don't know the times yet, but we're, you know, Sue Regis Glasser will definitely be open and people from Art Movement will be there and Tony from Art Movement will be showcasing some of his work. Yeah, um, it's going to be a good time. And then we have July 14th, um, Sue DeLost, um, and her clients from Cornerstone, which I'm so excited about this show, that her clients from Cornerstone are going to be showcasing some of their artwork. Now, what is Cornerstone? Like a special needs sort of. I get the impression that she's kind of she's always very modest when she talks about herself. Sue DeLost. Sue DeLost really is amazing. Sure what Cornerstone. Is. Cornerstone's like Trinity. You yeah. know, it's uh, kind of similar to what Kevin Krauss does. Sure. And Ruben Calderon does yes, stuff too, right? He He's got art too. students for that also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really great thing. That's cool that you're you're opening your doors to other groups and people oh, definitely. that want to do and stuff I, too. You know, and so they, but Cornerstone has a huge art show the day before New Orleans North, ju- June seventh at the museum. Oh, okay. Where the clients are going to be showcasing a good amount of their work. There's going to be there's more space there, so obviously there'll be right. more clients. And then whatever leftover work they have, some the certain clients that Sue picks, I think, are going to be at my place on July 14th, which is a Saturday, and I think the times are maybe like two to six for them to showcase their work and sell their work. It's not just showcasing. And uh, the client will get 70%, and I think Cornerstone gets 30%. Oh, cool. So that's a super. I'm, I'm super excited for that show, and I hope to do more stuff like that. And then we have August 5th. Um, we're going to be showcasing um, my niece and my stepdaughter Peyton's artwork at the studio. So something for kids and yeah. stuff to do, too. That's great. So my niece Lily and Peyton and... They're just going to be showcasing some of their work. There'll be no selling, but they're going to have, I think they're both doing like 10 pieces um, and showing off their work, you know, because I, I really want to start doing more stuff with kids like that. Yeah, they need somewhere to go and something to do. Yeah. You can't just be bars all the time. I was talking about that with uh, Andrew Polly, you know, and we were 
trying to get together and brainstorm ideas, just something else to do. What if you don't drink or what if you don't, you know, what if music isn't your life? Like all of us are musicians and like, we gotta have music every day. What, what if you just want to do something else? I mean, is there anything else we can think of to do besides just drink beer and play music? And so I think it's great that you're providing something else for us to do. All these different art fests and fairs and things going on, stuff yeah, for whole stuff. families. It's great. And then I think we have Aaron's show Friday, August 17th, Aaron Blazer. Yeah. So I'm, I'm stoked about that because we've showcased um, Eric's work two different times. So it's exciting. Aaron's kind of on the administration side. Sure. Like Aaron is like kind of like Kayla and I, as much as I say I'm the crazy artist, I still have to deal with a lot you know, stuff other than just creating artwork. And, and you do a great it, job at that too, by the way. I'm okay at it. I, I guess I could probably be better. I could be worse. But, you know, Erin is also like that too. Like she's the artist, but she also, you know, takes care of a lot and helps out with a lot of emails and especially stuff for this non-for-profit and great Supplies. ideas for classes and has such great ideas. So I'm stoked for her that she's um, going to be able to, you know, showcase her like legit artwork right. and, and, and give up the administration side for a night. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not, I'm not going to bug her for emails <laughs> or like, Aaron, can you do this? All right. Don't look at me. I, I still might. <laughs> but and no, she does Aaron, great stuff too. No, and a lot of her does. stuff is hanging up at, yeah. well, not a lot. She's got some pieces hanging up at mm-hmm. Elder Brewing too, which is also another really great uh, venue for artists. It was really, I thought thoughtful. <laughs> I thought thoughtful of them to, open up their new music room to be more or less an art gallery for anyone local. I mean, they have stuff hanging up. No, it's awesome. The whole place. It's, it's pretty inspiring to help see that everyone's treatment doing. too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they, oh, that's another way to think of it. What do you say? Artist sound treatment. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it's true. The more paintings and pictures and uh, actually canvas mm-hmm. paintings are really great to have up in music rooms. It helps kind of. Oh, does it? EQ the sound. Dampens. Yeah. Helps dampen the sound. And, you know, the uh, what they say, too, is the <laughs> – I'm going to start getting kind of nerdy here. So, like, you know, like bass frequencies. Oh, that's the chimes. Hey, that's- <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, we've given you a little bit of information about what's to come here from the art movement and from the prison project. And it's uh, Dave and I's goal to get each of the members of both of those projects in here for some more interviews to give you more details about what's happening if you want to know more about these events or you want to show up to these events, which we'd really appreciate, you'll have a great time. I put all the links to all the pages and events in the description of our show. And then if you go to our Facebook page or the Instagram or Twitter, I'll always be posting these events. You'll see them over and over and over again. Um, if for some reason you don't see them and you want for more information, you can contact our page directly or... Or if you want to contact Sue Regis or the CCP or the – I don't think the Prison Project is a public page yet, though, is it? I'm I don't not know. sure. No. But we'll find it. We'll get it all up there. And uh, we hope you have enjoyed – oh, wait. Dave's going to yell at me. I got to do the propers. Right? Is that right? So I want to thank – if you want to not be a tool. Yeah, I don't want to be a tool. I do like the band, <laughs> but I don't, I, don't wanna, I don't want to be one. We want to thank Mike and Kathy Trisna. For everything they do, allowing us to go into this building yep. week after week yep. and, uh, you know, make a bunch of noise. Full on support in the scene. For 12 years now, 12 years and counting. They were here when nobody was here. They were, and they're awesome. Yeah, and thank God, because look at what's going on now. Right. You know, And I hope we never forget about all the things that they did for us as all these new businesses are coming in and kicking some serious ass and also supporting all the local businesses and artists and the whole bit. Um, and also thanks to Bill Aldrich for letting Dave and I use this studio for yep for donations. Basically, he's uh, really been great for that. And uh, also Dave, who's been doing this with me for now thirty eight times. Yep. Yay, Dave. Thirty eight. I think job, I've Dave. spoken twenty four times. <laughs> <laughs> this was twenty five. <laughs> and this has been another episode.